What if there was no more practice in Formula One? Welcome back to my channel. I am Greg Allen of GAF1, and we're, today we're talking about what if Formula One got rid of practice all together. If you're new to my channel, please consider giving me a like and subscribe and welcome. So going into this weekend, FP1, FP2 canceled. Some sad stuff there. We didn't get to see Mick Schumacher didn't make his FP1 debut. And we got to see absolutely no action on the racetrack today, regardless of how much I was looking forward to it because we didn't have any racing last week. Both FP1, FP2, complete washouts. Um, the rain wasn't really the issue. The fog was the issue. They couldn't put the helicopter up there. But the whole time while I was waiting to see if any action on the track was going to happen, it got me thinking, what if we didn't have practice in Formula One anymore? What would that look like? And are there some advantages to it? And are there some disadvantages to it? So that's what we're going to look at. First advantage that comes to mind, cost. So if you take out an entire day of practice, FP1, FP2, and FP3 on Saturday, you're going to reduce cost. So these cars use obviously gasoline, tires, and a whole bunch of stuff that goes into Formula One practice. You're going to reduce that greatly. Forbes magazine had it at $285 million was the average to win the championship up to last year's 2019 Lewis Hamilton win. That's a lot of money to win a Formula One championship. Formula One needs to look about the future and how to stay sustainable. And one of the things we look at is that right now F1 teams are basically break even. You don't really make money in Formula One as a team owner unless you sell that team for more money that was worth when you came in. So one thing that Formula One for its sustainability and long-term longevity in auto sports needs to look at is how can they reduce cost? They've obviously already taken some steps towards that with everyone signing a pact for 2022, which should reduce the amount of money that goes into development. But this would be another huge way that they could actually reduce costs. Cutting out practices is going to reduce costs in a lot of ways, not just the parts in the car, the tires, the fuel and all that stuff, but it's going to reduce costs by the fact that you're not putting up all of your team members in hotels and accommodations and food and everything that goes into the crazy logistics that is Formula One racing. Another huge advantage that kind of plays right in with that, the shorter weekend. You're cutting out Friday altogether and you're really leaving it to a Saturday qualification and a Sunday Grand Prix. And a shorter weekend means more travel time for uh, all the teams moving their equipment to these tracks and to these countries. So logistically, it gives you a little bit more wiggle room, which means you probably could do some more cost savings on that. It'll also allow the drivers more time, drivers and, and owners and all, all the people that are, work on these teams, more time with their families throughout the week. Um, a little bit less of concern since Formula One does every other week for the most part, uh, on a normal year, I should say. But shorter weekend definitely allows uh, a lot of different options for it. We've kind of seen that happen a little bit accidentally this year and in other forms of motorsports. But shorter weekend, definitely going to play into the whole cost thing. Not having to have all the food, uh, all the hotel accommodations, everything like that is going to make this a little bit cheaper. Uh, another advantage that people talk about all the time is that it could reduce the competitive advantage that some of the top teams have. If you take out FP1, FP2, and FP3, maybe a Mercedes, a Red Bull, uh, can't dial in their car and be so much further ahead on Sunday if they do that. Um... That one, I'm going to go and talk a little bit more on the disadvantage one. It's possible that's the case, and where I think you'd really see that is in qualifying. If the cars came fresh out of the trucks, out of the garage, and onto the track for qualifying, I think that you would have a little bit more unpredictable uh, qualifications through Q1, Q2, and Q3. Um, the really good teams are going to figure it out by, by Sunday's Grand Prix, in my opinion, but it could create some interesting qualification, and maybe that's an alternative thing you look at rather than talking about these reverse grids. Um, you might you might get a little bit more uh, traction behind no practice than reverse grids with teams like Mercedes, for instance. So those are the advantages. Disadvantages. Less TV time. And why is that important is it could reduce the AVE. And I have that written here. What is AVE? AVE is the Advertising Value Equivalent. So what does that mean? So AVE is, me is measured or a measurement that sponsors look at of how much money would it cost these sponsors or partners with these teams to get the same amount of airtime that they're getting by being on the cover of a Formula One car or Formula One suit or on, on all the Formula One race teams logos and everything like that. So basically put a very simplistic way, if I'm Coca-Cola and I'm sponsoring a Formula One car and that Formula One car is on television for FP1, FP2, FP3 and we take out all three of those things, 
how much money is it going to cost me to get the same amount of advertising time elsewhere on other you know mediums whether it be commercial social media movie placements and that's a huge deal because this number right here is what formula one looks at and how these teams are breaking even or actually how they're making a profit and if they are making a profit the fact that sponsors like um you, you know red bull for instance we'll just take down that's a really easy one to, to snipe here is they can justify the cost that it goes into formula one right now because the amount of money it would take them to advertise for the same amount of airtime that a max verstappen's got getting throughout a whole race weekend is right now would be a lot more for red bull to get that same advertising time it's much cheaper for them to advertise via being all over verstappen's car and if he wins a race weekend it's a huge deal for red bull they just saved a lot of money in advertising that way so that's something we have to look at. If we take out three whole television broadcasts by getting rid of that, that could tip the scales the wrong way to where Formula One becomes not profitable for the sponsors. And, you know, I would have to do a deeper dive into that and whether or not they could figure out ways to get around that. But if you tip the scales the wrong way on that, you have sponsors pulling out and you have a much bigger issue on your hands and that whole cost advantage goes out the window. So that could be a huge disadvantage that would need to be investigated and researched a little bit more. Another disadvantage, it could be, it could create dangers for the less experienced drivers or any driver on a new track. So this year in Formula One, we've gone to a lot of new racetracks. And I think overall with simulators and the fact that these drivers are coming up through F3 and F2, it's, it's not a huge concern, but it is a concern. I mean, these drivers are, are racing at extremely high you know rates of speed and the slightest wrong move wrong turn wrong taking a tur turn the wrong way can result in a pretty horrific crash and formula one's not immune to that we see formula one drivers crash and make mistakes and if you take away three practice sessions for these drivers to dial that in uh, we could have a lot more dangerous situations and, and i really do look at those less experienced drivers that might be making you know their first start in a formula one car at a brand new track that that could be a recipe for a pretty big crash um I don't think that's a huge disadvantage because I, these are the best drivers in the world. I think there's ways to get around that. And the simulators these days are so good, but it is something to, to put on the board, I think. Another disadvantage, and for me, this is the big sticking point. And I'm going to talk a little bit, probably most on this point right here. There is no proof that would actually create more winners or put another way that would actually reduce that competitive advantage from the top teams. Um, it's a nice idea. To say, hey, if we get rid of practice, it might level the playing field a little bit more. But to be honest with you, the best drivers and the best teams are the teams that would probably need the least amount of practice when you think about it. And I think there's no greater proof that there's no proof. <laughs> See what I did there? Is by looking at NASCAR this year. So after they came back from what happened with COVID here and started racing here in the States again, they have not had practice this entire year. They don't even qualify. They race based on point spots and a, basically a lottery drawing based on where they are in the point standings right now. A lot of people were saying, hey, no practice could be fantastic. The drivers have actually come out mostly huge in favor of not having practice. They've loved it for the most part. But what you haven't seen is more winners and much more parity in NASCAR. In fact, what you've actually seen is two to three drivers kind of dominate ever since they've come back. Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, and, and to a lesser extent, you've had um, you know Chase Elliott sneak in there a few times. But really, Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick have pretty much dominated NASCAR since they've come back. And what actually wound up happening is the reverse of this reducing of competitive advantage. These were drivers that thrive on not having practice, that had really good notes from the last couple seasons, didn't need the practice to figure out the setup on their car, didn't need the practice to figure out the racetrack because they're experienced race car drivers. And what you've had is a lot of younger drivers completely struggle this season and take steps back. Uh, I, I think of like a William Byron or... or and Alex Bowman, for instance, and Hendrick Motorsports and NASCAR, uh, they're nowhere near where they should be and where I think they would be if there was practice. You also have a, a two-time NASCAR champion in Kyle Busch who thrives on seat time. So Kyle Busch would typically run sometimes one, two, three races on all the different series of NASCAR on a race weekend and have all those practice times. And this year, in 2020, he's had no practice, no qualifying, and he hasn't been racing in the lower series. And Kyle Busch doesn't have a win this year. He's a defending champion of this sport, and he has looked terrible and might get eliminated from the playoffs with no practice. Um, so a pretty interesting way, you know, maybe case study of what it would look like if Formula One got rid of practice. But it also shows that this whole, uh, it'll create more race winners. It could create, you know, a, a more competitive parity in, in Formula One. I don't think that's true. I think what you'd see is the really 
experienced drivers and better teams that have all those notes and development notes um, thrive even more. But that's my personal opinion. So that's what I think it would look like, some of your advantages, disadvantages. If there was no more practice in Formula One, I'd love to know what you think about it. If you come across this video, thank you for watching. Please consider giving me a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you think getting rid of practice altogether would be a huge disaster in Formula One or is a fantastic idea. Or maybe you think just getting rid of Friday practice is okay and we leave that FP3 on Saturday morning in there and we're, we're in a pretty perfect situation there. Let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next video.